What's up everybody, it's your boy Double C here, and yes, welcome to the longly anticipated 1000 subscriber Q&A. I initially wanted to do this video a few days after I had reached 1000 subscribers and not, uh, 1070 subscribers. So much for planning ahead, I guess. Uh, the reason this video took so long, uh, to come out is because, one, life just kept on throwing a lot of strange and unexpected stuff at me, and two, I had been sick the past few days, and I'm fully better now, but, oh man, my voice was not doing really well at all. And three, time. I just didn't have a lot of it. So I had to make do with what I had, and just waited till I was a bit bigger yet, and wait for a day where I would actually have enough time to get something like this done. Which thus leads us to today. Now, initially I wanted 35 questions to answer, but I instead ended up getting a total of almost 10 to answer. And that's more than fine with me. They're all really fun and interesting questions to answer anyway, so why not just deal with the amount I have and just roll with it? So yeah, now with all that out of the way, let us begin the Q&A in 3, 2, 1, let's go! Koopa BE Fan 2010 says, Congrats on 1k subs. Sorry I'm late. Right. It's cool, Koopa, you're cool. Here's a quick question. What inspired you to become a BE fan? Well, to put it into perspective, I've basically been a fan of BE for pretty much the longest time. It, it, and I, it all just depends on whether I'm in the mood to make content for BE or Super Mario or anything else. But whenever I'm in the mood to make BE content, I get to work and I put as much passion and effort as I can into videos like that and just have fun with it. And that's basically the reason why I've been a fan of BE for so long. It's just so much fun. And even as an adult, looking back at watching those videos and laughing my head off at the most hilarious of things, it's, it's just a lot of fun and it brings back so many nostalgic memories from my childhood. And it's basically what inspired me to become a BE fan. It's fun to watch, which thus makes it fun to remake. Goldalore the Cart Kid says, Congrats, man. You deserve it, smiley face. I have a few questions. One, who is your favorite Kirby character? Well, with there being so many cute, cuddly, colorful, and iconic characters in the Kirby franchise, I'm gonna have to say Kirby himself, because one, he's a cute and cuddly little boy. Two, he's proud. And three, he's like the epitome of a video game character. He's got loads of powers, he's got loads of iconic lines, and, well, his world is just so full of color and lore that it just makes the games so much fun to play. A lot like Mario and Sonic with their iconic touches to their games, Kirby's own touches to his games, they just hit harder than anything else, man. That's what makes his game so much fun to play, and that's what makes Kirby my favorite Kirby character of the Kirby franchise. Two. Favorite Switch game? Let's uh, go! <coughs> Three. What's the video you're most proud of? Well, if I were to pick a very specific video, I would pretty much have to say Tom and Sammy Ferrandole Frenzy. I would say City's Arc, but I think that could be marginally approved upon, but that's probably just me. Anyways, Tom and Sammy Ferrandole Frenzy is episode 6 in series 1, and I gotta say that it's Basically, a much bigger improvement from all the other five episodes that were released already. It's got much more impactful jokes, it's got better timing, it's got a much more into detail storyline, the animation's improved, it's basically just a major step up in my originality side of the content on my channel. And I definitely look forward to working on episodes 7, 8, 9, and 10 of series 1 and to see where Tom and Sammy go from there because they're just that fun to animate. Raiden Production says, Congrats on 1k subs, Double C. You deserve it, my man. Aw, thanks, Raiden. Also, for some questions. 1. What was your inspiration on your first mascot, the Red Circle Guy? Oh, you mean Rat Tom, yeah. Um, 
I wouldn't necessarily say I have an inspiration for the character himself, other than the fact that, well, his design and his name basically just came straight out of my head, and it kind of just stuck. I do plan on redesigning him, I just don't know how yet. But he, before he was a circle guy, he was made of rectangles. Yeah, before I got into Google Drawings, I used my Wondershare from Mora software back in 2021, and kind of just made my own little original character out of these squares and rectangles, and didn't really give him a name yet because, well, he was my first original character I ever created digitally, so I was just starting out. But when I got into Google Drawings and learned how to use more than just squares and rectangles, I learned how to make more complicated designs. Well, complicated in a simplistic sense. And when I sort of made Rat Tom himself, before I named him Rat Tom, he was kind of like this red circle character with no outlines. It was more like in the Baby Einstein style, with the way he looked and everything. And then when I switched to digital drawing, I learned how to make more complicated shapes, which thus enriched the character's design even more. And then we got this design shown on screen here, done by the lovely video toy gamer. Thank you so much, mon ami. And uh, well, yeah, I would def I would just say that there was no real inspiration for the character, other than he was just a character that popped into my head one day, and well, here he is now. Two. How did you make the Scarlatti and Bach BEMCs? Well, you see, the the process of that is actually very simple. So. What I did first was search for the MIDI, so I went to the one place I rely on the most for MIDIs for my BEMCs, which is MuseScore.com. I always search up for a guy named Jacob13 Einstein, I know it's a really weird name, but that's how he's named on MuseScore, and I search for a track of a certain, tr of a certain song that I want to remix. And if it's downloadable, I download the MIDI. But make sure you guys download the MIDI too. And then I simply go into my software I do with BMCs as well as music composition and remixing and sound design, GarageBand, put the MIDI in there, and then search for the sound fonts. But since I didn't have the BE sound fonts at that point in time, I used Nintendo 64 sound fonts, more specifically one for the Super Mario 64 game. Man, I kind of just jumbled it all together, mixing the sound fonts along with the tracks, and uh, well, yeah, there you go. Three, are you planning on getting or making puppets? Uh, that's a solid maybe on both ends. Getting puppets these days can be quite a challenge, especially with the prices. Ugh, it's gonna take me quite a while to earn up that kind of money. As for making puppets, it does look and feel interesting, and sounds interesting too, but I'm not entirely sure if I would be interested in doing it just yet. Um, if I were to pick up puppet making in the future, I would definitely think of having fun with it, but as of right now, not really. Dr. Gamer 100, aka K Thrills, says, Congrats, bud. Here's my question What inspires your art style? Well, I have read many a comic book, watched many a cartoon, and supported many a digital artist. I've also supported Gay Thrills as well. You can check out his stuff on DeviantArt. He does great stuff. But I would genuinely say that I don't really have a real inspiration for my art style. All I could say is that it basically came with age. Like, I draw something, and I look at it, and I think to myself, yeah. I'm enjoying this. And so basically, it started with this, then this, and then this, and well, this is the way it's always been. So yeah, I don't have a real inspiration. Well, I, I can't really say that. I'm more genuinely inspired by some simplistic artists on the internet for the way I draw. But other than that, I don't have any actual inspiration for my art style, other than it just all came with age. This question came from a conversation I was having with Gary Zilla about the rules of the Q&A, and he asks, Have you ever tried Kaiju or Prehistoric Life on your channel? No. Well, guys and gals, this officially brings us to the end of the Q&A. 
Before I go, I'd just like to give a quick shout out to all these guys shown on the screen here for congratulating me on reaching 1,000 subscribers. Your guys' support means a lot to me. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, I know what you might be asking. With all these other projects, as well as this Q&A out of the way, what's next? Well, I've got the last remaining episodes of Tom and Sammy Season 1, I mean, Series 1 to do, which will be a lot of fun. And I've got the Warren Waluigi show coming up, i got the next few episodes of the new Puppet Office show coming up, as well as the return of Super Mario Tunes, which I plan on doing sometime soon, uh, later this week. And, um, yeah. I think this pretty much just about covers it. Thank you for watching, and thanks to all those who have submitted their questions for the Q&A. And I hope you guys keep on coming back soon for more videos, because i got a lot more amazing stuff coming up, and your support means everything to me. It would be greatly appreciated if you like these videos and subscribe for more, because I put a lot of effort into this, and I'm putting a lot more effort into projects coming up later this year and going on next year. So again, thanks a lot to everyone for watching, and for everyone who submitted their questions. And, yeah, if it's your birthday today and you're watching this video, happy freaking birthday to you. Please remember, stay cool, stay positive, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.